Hello, I'm James Stephen, technology journalist at UC Today. Joining me is Savane Berry, Executive VP of Product and Engineering at Vonage. Today we'll be talking about composable communications. Hello, Savane, how are you? I'm doing great. Uh, thank you for having me over here. Thanks. So just to kick us off, what are composable communications? Yeah, it's a big word, isn't it? Composable communications. Um, you know, to me, it's actually pretty straightforward, which is um, how can you break down the big, um, really complex looking communications infrastructure that you might be using within your own company into small Lego blocks? And um, you know, think of it as a, literally small Lego pieces that if you can uh, build together and create something very interesting and useful for your customers, um, you can do it much faster and you can do it in a way which is highly configurable for your customers. So um, I'll give you a great example. Um, you know, uh, one of the things that uh, I think is happening in the industry today is that conversations uh, like you and I are just having right now are becoming the new digital storefront for companies. So most companies, when they started off with their digital storefront, what was it? It was a website. Uh, that was in the early days. And then the app store came along. And then what, were, what, what uh, was the digital storefront? It became the mobile app. In the future, what we believe is going to happen is that conversations are going to become the new digital storefront. This is how I'm going to go try to go buy something from a, from anybody, from a small retail store down the road or from a big uh, a retailer anywhere in the, in the world. Uh, and to do that, that conversation could be over video, voice, or um, uh, it could be over messaging, it could be over social, it could be over web chat, it could be anything, right? To be able to integrate those communication channels in the existing workflows you, uh, with the existing sy uh, system of records that those uh, companies have requires a, uh, a configurability and requires a way to do that in a way where you're almost building through Lego blocks. And if you don't, then you're stuck with just one way of doing things. And that one way doesn't apply to a company which is in retail or it's in transportation or it's in healthcare or it's in financial services. It just doesn't. So to be able to configure that from one uh, location to another, from one industry to another, you kind of need that composable uh, composability in order for you to integrate. And, um, and that's what you know, a real world example of a composable enterprise tooling means. And then behind the scenes, those same companies doing it themselves. Okay, fantastic, thank you. And I think you just uh, started talking about it then, but you know, if, if, if a company wants to, wants to integrate composable communication solutions, what should they look to do? Yeah, so this is where I was going, right? Where um, uh, composability is a, it's almost like the DNA of what you do as a company. So if you are build, if you are in the um, non-tech space, and let's say if you are in the healthcare space, if you're the financial services company, if you're a, uh, a retail company, one of the things you want to be asking yourselves is, whatever you're building, can it be built as a service? or whatever you're purchasing uh, from off the shelf, can it be purchased uh, such that it can be configured and it can be configured as a set of services versus just getting something off the shelf as a monolithic uh, piece of software, which cannot be configured, but can only be customized. Big difference between the two, configuration and customization. Customization requires armies of people who need to come in and help out in um, doing one thing really, really well, but that after that you lose it, you can't repeat it. Um, configuration means you can configure it, but then that configurability can vary and it doesn't take that much time. So as a, as, as a company, uh, which is in one of these spaces or uh, for that matter, any industry you're in, you wanna be asking that question. And once you ask the question, once you get more comfortable on that, I call it the composable maturity scale, um, if your composable maturity scale is very low, which means you're just starting off, that's okay. You could still start somewhere. In this case, what I would recommend is looking at communications as a way to start that engagement with your customers, right? And leveraging uh, APIs and services like I described, voice, video, chat, etc., uh, and embed that into your existing functionality. So when you go to their website, for example, uh, you can have a conversation. 
you can actually have a conversation. You can have a conversation with a bot, which frankly doesn't um, feel like very robotic. You feel like you actually want to have that conversation. Your questions are getting answered. So, um, so I think that's where I would start is uh, start with, with a small way to, especially if you're lower on the maturity scale of the composable maturity scale, start with three or four use cases where you are engaging with your customers embed those APIs within your existing workflows and system of records and try it out with a pilot set of customers. Okay, thanks. And what should these businesses look for in a vendor to help support their journey? Uh, I think they should look for the same thing that I just uh, talked about. They should be asking the questions about, well, how do you develop your own capabilities? Um, are they developed as monolithic pieces of software or are they developed as a set of APIs and services uh, which can be pulled together in a variety of different ways to create these very tangible sets of use cases. Uh, because if it's the former, then there's probably going to be another big uh, bill that's going to be slapped on top of that for professional services. And, um, and, and that professional services bill can only add up because, as I said, it's going to be customized. The work will be customized versus the latter, which is going to be more configurable. And when it's configurable, it is something that can be easily integrated with existing workflows, existing system of records, and you can configure it easily and then therefore repeat it for uh, a lot of use cases. So um, they should be asking the same question, right? Are you yourself, do you have a API platform? Do you have a, a set of services, uh, RESTful services that can be embedded easily? Um, how do you provide the configurability? So those are the kind of questions they should be asking them. Okay, thanks so much. And then what are the latest uh, composable communication solutions that uh, uh, the Vonage is working on at the moment? Sure. I mean, look, our DNA, Vonage's DNA, is building these composable solutions um, for now, I don't know, past six, seven years or so. So this is not a new thing for us. We've uh, uh, Our entire uh, set of solutions that we build, whether it's our CCAS uh, solutions for contact centers or whether it's our UCAS solutions, uh, are built on top of an API platform. So whatever we do, we do on top of uh, uh, using a set of services, using configurability and making it really easy for our customers to then start deploying and configuring their own workflows. Um, so, you know, we've been, in fact, we just acquired last year uh, another company, Jumper.ai, which is uh, in the conversational commerce space. So conversational commerce is also a new and emerging category. Uh, same thing there, right? We have a composable enterprise, a uh, composable set of functions with uh, APIs which are embedded now in a developer platform. And that developer platform can be access, uh, uh, accessible to anybody. Uh, we have a million plus developers who use that today. So um, uh, we have been, you know, starting, we, we started on this journey uh, a long time ago. Um, and I, whenever I speak with a lot of customers, whenever I speak with a lot of our partners and, and other even competitors in the industry, uh, there's a lot of learning that we can share with them. And we are sharing with them about what to do and what not to do. But VCP, which is a Vonage communication platform, is one of the marquee examples of what a true composable enterprise solution looks like out there. So uh, happy to you know share more details with any of your readers at any point in time around it. Savannah Berry, thank you so much for talking to me. Thanks so much, James. And thank you for watching. I'm James Stephen, technology journalist at UC Today. And please don't forget to like and share this video on our social media pages. And until next time, bye for now.